Hi, so today uh, I want to talk to you about an investigator that uh, I met and baptized in Argentina. His name was Juan Carlos Lopez. Uh, now, my companion and I met uh, Juan Carlos uh, on my first day uh, serving in uh, the city of Rosario. I was about halfway through my mission. It was uh, the morning of transfers. I got sent to, to this, the new city uh, of Rosario. And uh, as soon as I got to uh, the apartment, the missionary's apartment, and met my companion, Elder Wasden, um, the two of us, uh, with, without even unpacking my suitcases, we head out to do some, some missionary work. Um, not long after leaving the apartment, we're uh, walking down the street, and uh, Elder Wasden sees a man walking uh, parallel to us on the other side of the street. And he insists that we cross and go talk to this man. So we went and we talked to him. Elder Wazen was kind of new in the mission and, and I was a senior companion so I, I did most of the talking and um, it was Juan Carlos Lopez. He was a, a very nice man. Uh, he was kind of in a hurry running some errands. Uh, so we wrote down his name and address uh, and we made an appointment to go teach him the first discussion on the following day. So uh, that was great. When, uh, when we got back to, my, uh, to the missionary apartment uh, for lunch that day uh, I made a big mistake and I threw out my old planner because I had just come from the other area and, and it had all my you know uh, old stuff from my old area but I had written down Juan Carlos's name and, and uh, appointment information and I accidentally threw it out. Um, the next day uh, it started with a fresh new planner and Elder Watson and I somehow just totally forgot to go visit uh, Juan Carlos. Uh, so the, the following day, we're sitting in our apartment at lunchtime, and we get a call from the mission home. Uh, apparently, Juan Carlos had looked in the phone book, found the mission home, uh, called them, and was angry that we hadn't come visit, uh, to visit him to teach the first discussion. So we ran over to Juan Carlos's apartment. We apologized, um, and uh, we, we made amends. We ended up uh, teaching uh, Juan Carlos uh, the first discussion. Uh, and it went wonderful. He was very receptive to it. In fact, he told us that the morning that we met him on the street, uh, he had a conversation about Mormonism with his mother. Uh, and, uh, and when we walked up to him, uh, that whole morning he'd been thinking about Mormonism and really wanted to learn about the Mormon church. So uh, we set an appointment for the second discussion, and uh, the second discussion is where you give the baptismal invitation. Uh, so we invited uh, Juan Carlos to get baptized. He accepted. We, we began making arrangements for his baptism. Uh, he came to church. We taught the third discussion and the fourth discussion. Everything was going great. Uh, when we, uh, there were six discussions at that time, and when we arrived um, at uh, Juan Carlos's apartment for the fifth uh, discussion. Um, he invited us in as, and we sat down at his dining room table as we always did uh, for, to sit there for the discussions, but I noticed there was a calculator sitting on his, his table. Now, we had given him a, a little pamphlet about the fifth discussion at the end of the fourth discussion so he could read and, and be prepared. And in the fifth discussion, uh, we talked about the law of tithing among other things. Um, and I knew it was a bad sign when, we, when that calculator was sitting there. So we, uh, we started talking about uh, tithing, and Juan Carlos had a lot of concerns, a lot of questions. Uh, he was asking how many members there were in the world and making assumptions about people's income, and he was doing all kinds of calculations. And um, At that point, his, his progress towards baptism just came to a screeching halt. He stopped coming to church. Uh, we, we, uh, he, he had these doubts and we, were, we visited him time and time again over a two or three week period and we just couldn't resolve his concerns about tithing. We brought other members from the church uh, in that area to the discussions and, and Juan Carlos was always polite and cordial to us but he just uh, stopped progressing in the gospel. So um, we, we knew it was time to kind of uh, part ways because he wasn't progressing. And so we set up one last appointment, uh, kind of a goodbye appointment. And we went to his house 
and uh, we were just going. We, we were planning to, you know, of course, always leave an invitation to come to church or continue teaching more discussions if, if, uh, if he ever wanted to. But for the time being, we were gonna, you know, stop visiting him so much. But um, when, when he invited us in for this last visit, we sat down at his dining room table. The calculator was gone throughout that whole two or three week period every time we visited Juan Carlos that calculator was there on the table a symbol of of the stumbling block that was preventing him from progressing in the gospel and on that final appointment uh, or what we thought would have been the final appointment the calculator was gone and I was elated and uh, we talked to Juan Carlos and his doubts and concerns about tithing were all gone he he wanted to get baptized and we asked him what happened um, and he said the night before he had been in bed trying to sleep, but it was a really hot summer night, and he couldn't sleep, so he did what he always did uh, when he couldn't sleep because of the heat. He took his mattress up on top of his roof uh, to sleep. So he took his mattress uh, uh, on the roof and was laying down, gazing at the stars, and just felt like he should pray. So he knelt down and he prayed about the gospel, about our, uh, our message, about the church, about the Book of Mormon, about tithing, and he said the Spirit came upon him so strongly at that time, and he said that the Spirit kind of rebuked him and told him stop worrying about tithing, testified to him that the, the gospel was true and that he needed to get baptized, and he said from that moment on, all doubts were gone from his mind and he knew he needed to get baptized. <clears throat> So, um, so we did. We, we finished the discussions. Uh, he he got baptized. It, it was a wonderful occasion, uh, and uh, it, it was it was a miraculous conversion. Um, so, I just want to leave you with my testimony of of several things from that story. One, listening to the Spirit to open our mouths and and. When we saw Juan Carlos on the street go talk to him about the gospel, we had no idea that the Spirit was already working on him. Uh, uh, second, the uh, the power of prayer and, and, and his miraculous conversion that all of our logic and reasoning and pleading and teaching didn't help uh, him overcome those doubts about tithing. It was the Spirit that worked on him through prayer.